Welcome to a third in a series of videos on truss geometry. Um, this particular video is going to focus on a variation of parallel chord trusses, which I'm referring to here as hero trusses. This is a term that um, I heard in a lecture uh, by someone who had designed some of these trusses. I don't know that it's a standardly accepted term, but it's kind of expressive of the general form of the trusses. So we're going to use the term here. Um, we're going to discuss, first of all, selective variations in truss depth as a way of responding to where the worst moments tend to occur. And second of all, we're going to do some analogies to beams because we've already talked about this issue as in regard to beams. So if we have a simple span between this point and that point, we have a moment diagram that looks like this. If we have three supports, we can do two simple spans, one here and one there, producing this uh, fundamental parabolic um, variation in the moment diagram. If we take those two beams, though, and we make them one beam that's continuous over that center support, like so, then we get a negative moment near the center. So the deflection curve for a single simple span beam looks like this. Two simple span beams will deflect like that. But if these two ends are, in essence, welded together or continuous across here, then we have a smooth... A continuous curve relative to our uh, deflected shape. Um, the beauty to this is we get much lower deflection when we have continuity over the middle support than when we do when we have simple span beams. The downside is that we end up with a negative moment at this point, which means tension on the top, compression on the bottom, and that negative moment is essentially equal in magnitude to that positive moment. But it's occurring over a fairly, fairly short distance, and there are things that we can do to address that in a fairly economical way. So we talked about a situation like that in the case of steel beams uh, spanning over roads. In this case, we have a support down the median basically a continuous span from one side to the other with this intermediate support. That produces this large negative moment, which has been responded to by making this plate girder deeper near the middle. Um, interestingly enough, for the purposes of fabricating this bridge, it's been broken down into a piece that goes from there to there, which gets transported to the site. And then the rest of the beam is off on this end and off on that end. But basically, in essence, where special things have to be done to this plate girder to account for this need for greater depth and greater moment capacity, all that's been done in this one segment and then the other two segments are basically simple um, flat uh, plate girders. So this is a situation where we do something special just in that zone where we're trying to de deal with that negative moment. We can do something similar to that with trusses. So here we have um, a parallel cord truss that is fabricated as a single truss unit and put in place and it would simple span from that point to that point. But we can reduce deflection and make it structurally much more efficient if we can make the truss deeper and continuous where this support and that support occur, occurs. So here we have these additional elements that are fabricated and they bolt on each side of that original planar simple span truss. So they bolt here, they bolt there, they bolt there, and likewise on this side. And by the way, the origin of the term hero is this 
sort of looks like a person with these outstretched arms working in compression. And um, in this case, this construction has made these parts separate from that, which turns out to be pretty crucial because the overall depth from there to there, if all of this had been fabricated as one truss, this overall depth would have made it almost impossible to transport this truss down the highway. But by having this be the deepest part of anything that was transported, the whole transport and assembly of the system was easier. This is a lighter truss that can be raised fairly easily in place. And then each of these parts that are uh, scabbed on each side of it basically are individual parts that are fairly light for a crane to raise into place. The key with this system is you need to have some balance on this side versus that side and this side versus that side. Otherwise, this deep truss is tending to bend this column over if you don't have a deep truss on the other side to balance that influence. This, by the way, is one of the terminals of the Denver airport. This is another view and down below here is where the uh, subway runs to take you from one terminal to another. And this is looking a little more closely at these arms that are outstretched. And this makes it really clear that in fact this member and that member which are symmetric on each side of this truss are basically two separate members. And by the way, these members and, and these uh, trusses are being stabilized by moment connected joints here. So, and in some cases, these joints didn't have to be moment joints, but they were welded all around as a way uh, of making the structure look clean and elegant. So this is a close-up look at one of those joints, which is very nicely done. So this is a view from down below of those arms. This is up on the bridge. This is a close-up, and by the way, these are gigantic, extremely thick pieces of steel, which are used to distribute the compressive loads because the forces coming out of this steel are too powerful for this concrete to withstand it. So these are classic plates like the ones we sized at the base of a column, uh, except in this case the forces that are being transferred here are more nearly horizontal than vertical. You'll notice by the way all these trusses there's a consistent theme they are all moment connected because they're connected top and bottom to these verticals. So this entire system is stabilized as a rigid frame of tubular elements and deep trusses. This is just a close up. These trusses come to rest on these fins. So these fins were pre-welded to the columns. The bottom cords of the trusses just rest on top and there's a field weld at that point that makes the connection between that plate and the bottom flange or the bottom cord of that truss. This is another version of this kind of structure where the truss gets deeper at the support point um, and there's a balance of material always about the support point um, to, to make this more nearly like a moment connection for supporting this portion of the structure out between. This is part of the Civic Center in the city of Baltimore. Now, in a sense, they're showing this little cantilever here and you can think of that as a little cantilever there. This cantilever is not exactly optimal for this end condition here where it's just hanging off 
one way of thinking of it is the optimal cantilever, double cantilever is about 20.7%. Here we have four bays and one and one. So this one bay is one sixth of the six bays, which is more like 16 or 17%, which is a little less than optimal, but it ends up being optimal in this zone. Um, so in fact, it, it uh, overall works pretty well. That ends our brief video on the so-called uh, hero truss configuration which is a variation on the parallel cord truss where the structure gets deeper over intermediate supports.